Good morning, folks, and welcome to our first session, breakout session this morning. Uh, just as a quick introduction, I'd like to introduce our first speaker this morning is Ken Toth, who is a PC and network technology instructor at CareerLine Tech Center in Michigan. And uh, just from meeting Ken a little bit yesterday, he's an all-around great guy. He's really nice, and one of the things that I learned about him is, is his passion for the students. He really loves helping them succeed and seeing them succeed both inside of the classroom and outside of the, uh, of the classroom. And um, if you have time later on, introduce yourself to him and ask him about his tie collection. And uh, please welcome, please join me in welcoming Ken Toth. Check, there you go. So as I explain my uh, bibliography or obituary, whichever way we go, um, <laughs> Yep, uh, I can remember back in 1989 going into Mr. Clark's office, the assistant superintendent at Coloma Community Schools and signing that first contract for $17,900. Anybody in that same ballpark? You remember that day? Okay, so I went in there and they explained the whole retirement system to me. I said, hey, this is how you can go. In Michigan, you can go 30 years and retire. You know, and then I fall in love, and I've got a junior or a sophomore in college and a uh, junior in high school, so that didn't work too well for me, that 30 and out plan. But I did just finish my 30th year of teaching, and what it makes me do is reflect back what technology has done in those 30 years and what keeps me going in the classroom after 30 years and potentially now 40 years. You know, where will I be in 40 years? And... When I truly, when they, I was talking to Wendy, uh, my account manager, and talking about speaking here, and I said, the technology, it's gonna change, but, so I'm gonna try to share with you some of the things I do in the classroom that go above and beyond the technology part that I think is beneficial to my students and really drives my program. Um, so there, Bits, Bytes, try to come up with a name for a conference. Bits, Bytes, and Pieces, and I don't know if there's totally four, there might be a few more. Um, first thing we're gonna go through is my routine. And uh, everyone's gotta come up with a routine, and the reason I hit routines, and I hit routines really hard with my students is because they're either gonna be the ones that are gonna be developing the routines for their staff, potentially. They're either gonna be following the routine or developing a routine. So they need to come up with how that happens. So for me, it starts with that daily assignment that was just up on the board. And my first trimester, our daily assignments start with a math and English sheet. Five math questions, five English questions. And the reason I start with those is my seniors that take my class can potentially get math credit from their high school. So I wanna be able to document that math, whatever math we do. And the English part is because, good God, they gotta be able to write. And it's just, they better be able to document. So we hit that pretty hard the first trimester, first trimester and a half. Then we go on to like discussion topics like the one I had up. We'll switch over and I'll eliminate maybe one math English sheet. And I'm gonna show you some examples. We got a family feud game. Vocab is big for us though. We do vocabulary at least twice a week at the startup. And the reason we do that is because every Friday for me, we do a 15 question matching vocab quiz. Okay, and then second and third trimester, as we've leaned off the math, not that math ever goes away, they, our math coordinator will tell you, but as we, we move from the math, we do more of the certification practice tests. And those are 15 questions every day. We try to hit it 15 questions the first five to 10 minutes every day. And I'm gonna show you how students know how to do that. Um, my routine, this has been written up on the board and it, it, it switches a little bit. This is the routine that the students are asked to follow. And the reason we write it on the board and I don't have it on a poster is because, as we know, routines tend to change. So for me, my first thing listed is a binder. I do come from a facility that has some resources, so every student gets a nice three-inch D-ring binder. We give them, I teach them how to put their dividers in there. We learn, hey, we're gonna put startup material here. Anything I give you that first two weeks, you're gonna put in that startup area. Anything employability, you go in here, we put our different curriculum areas. So that three ring binder is a big thing. I evaluate it three times a year, every 12 weeks. It's their file cabinet. We also talk about how to thin your file cabinet. What can we remove? What do we need to keep? 
Um, also in that binder, there's a pouch, and it's listed on there. And in the pouch, and we put different things, but the one I wanted to hit real quick is the, uh, see if I can, the, the pen and pencil. I'm only a pen and pencil guy. I give you a pen and pencil first day of the year. First day I hand you that pen and pencil. It's the only pen and pencil I'm ever going to give you. I've done this for 30 years. Uh, the pen that I give you, as long as you own that pen and you bring me back the ink refill or the empty cartridge, I give you a refill. I've got college students that come back. I've got people who've been in the industry for 25 years. They still come back to see me and they'll hand me that stupid ink cartridge and I've got to find a cartridge for it. So that's, that's, our, that's our binder system. And, and then they go in, they log into there, they check their email and their calendaring. And I'm going to hit a lot of these as I go through how this works into my day, all right, for success. All right? And you notice, the last thing, get started on your curriculum work. Now, the routine is great until all of a sudden that announcement comes over that says, we're in lockdown, and this is not a drill. And we actually had that happen this year at about 11.45, and the whole routine gets thrown off. You go into lockdown, and we got into lockdown for about 45 minutes, and then we get the all clear. Well, then it's how do you react to get back to that routine? And I couldn't have been more proud of my students that day because after that lockdown drill, they came back, we talked for a few minutes, we got right back in the routine, we had a productive day still. And I told them, when I know more, I'll tell you more. Next day, we were able to break down what happened in the situation, it was not, uh, an overly serious situation, but you don't know that when those and that, that comes across that loudspeaker. And that's just the world we're living in. Um, real quick about the program I teach in. I teach at a career tech center. There's about 30 total schools that attend. We get anywhere from a 15 person small charter school to a graduating class at West Ottawa or Hudsonville of about 500 students. So we get a variety of students and size school systems that come in. We do two sessions a day. I only get 11th and 12th graders, though. My program, we have two hard start times, 8 a.m. and noon. We're a two-hour and 45-minute program. Some schools release at, after a two-hour period. Okay, so just so you get the idea of the, the scenario, and you got to adjust it. When I taught in Coloma those first nine years, you know, I was teaching on selectric typewriters, and you had 30 of them in there, and you got 28 kids, and six hours a day, it was just a different atmosphere. Then you went to the longer session, so there's an adjustment period. There are no prerequisites for my class. It brings in a rainbow of skill sets, okay? And I don't, I'm, I don't know how everybody's system's a little bit different, but that's mine. Kids come in, my daughters attend a school called Zealand. They get an iPad in kindergarten, they get, one sent, they get one sent home, so they have it at home from sixth grade on, so they're very adept with an iPad. You hand them a PC, it's a whole different world. We get students that are mostly Chromebook. We get some MacBook Pro schools. So we get a variety. We do have a second year option. Our focus is gonna be the IT hardware operating system network security. I only tell you that because that, it, that's sort of the, where the certifications we drive for are. Okay, we are very industry certification driven and career opportunities. But in the back end, it's all about what the state wants, right? I mean, the states, the states, I got to answer to the state in the back end. So I have to keep that in mind when I redo my reporting at the end of the year and when my curriculum coordinators come up to me and asking me how we're doing things. Second thing we're going to hit um, curriculum placement. And this is probably my, what we do, I think maybe what we do best is. We, this is a mapping and all the handouts are available. There's like 20 of them out there on the website or out there that are available for you. And if not, I have them for you. This is the mapping we use. This lays out our first and second year. And you can sort of see up top, the very first thing is here. This is the first cert we walk in the door to do. And my first three days are huge. First three days, kids come in, we do it like a introduction activity, we go. And we're going to go through some procedures, get logged in, and I'm going to get registered. And we're going to take the CertiPort IC3 GS5. Anybody use the IC3 cert? Nope, we're at a test out conference, Ken. But, so I use that. And the reason I use it is computer fundamentals. Okay, the computer fundamentals is the first test we take that day. And we buy a site license so the students have access. So I have enough that we could take it as a pre-test type post in a post-test. So we take that the first day. Second day, kids come in, we're gonna go over the student handbook, do some other activity, and we're gonna take the key applications exam. 
Third day, students come in. We're going to go through lockdown drill, fire drill, severe weather drill, right? We're going to document that. We're going to do those, and we're going to take the living online. Those three tests make up that certification. Then what I do is, how did we do on it? Last year, I think of my 41 students I had the first day, 13 passed all three. You're certified. We're going to put that on your resume. Some passed two of the three. Some passed one of the three. Some don't pass any. I'm going to place you into a curriculum based on that skill set you bring in. Okay, so for me, it's, it's setting up how, where our curriculum's going, okay? Um, day four of my class, that's usually a Monday, or actually it's a Tuesday, because we have, uh, it goes um, Labor Days, or Memorial Days in there, all right? So on a Tuesday, we come back, I've got their curriculum set up, but we're gonna work on a resume, and we're gonna set up where they're at right there on day four. Get them a baseline. Here's where you pre-tested in, let's set up your resume, your skill sets, give you a visual of how we can grow, okay? And the individual goals, and that's that meeting I'll have with the students. I use a calendar, and I'm on a blackboard, I don't know what other, I, I, I use, we use Google calendars now. Every student has two calendars from me. The day they walk into class, they have their class calendar. So they'll know, hey, AM students, here's what our, and I'm gonna show you some examples, here's what our responsibility is as a class every day. Then by that fourth day, I've set up an individual calendar for every student because of where they pre-tested in on that IC3 exam. Some students who passed all three of those IC3 exams, they go right into our Microsoft curriculum and they'll do the Microsoft, they'll pre-test in the Microsoft operating system. They test that certificate, they test out of it, they pass it, they go into the Microsoft um, network fundamental certification. You, you, it, we're gonna find where your hole is and we're, we're not gonna duplicate because some kids have taken so many classes or everything they had available at their home school. We did a survey some of our sending schools didn't offer any IT classes. So they're coming in and they're, it's whatever they've learned at home. So that's how we set up our calendars. So the group calendar, I share it first year, second year, because I do have the two different groups. I have, every student who comes into my program as a first year, junior or senior, your first year for me. I, a second year student would be a junior who returned for their second year. And they're, truthfully, they're my, they're the ones, they're more on an independent study. You're definitely going at a different pace because you've been there a year. And I do share the calendars with parents. Some of them want to know. This is going to tell them their daily assignment. Every day, I used to just do the math English sheets every day. Well, then I'd get that kid who would go home and they would do like 45 of the math and English sheets in a row and then just turn one in and he'd come in and they didn't feel like they had to do anything at the start of class. So then I started tweaking it every day every day, making it different. So now they have to look at their calendar. It's forcing them to go back to that calendar. It also is where we prep for our vocab quizzes. And the big one down there is the extra events. Anything that we're doing as a school, anything I'm doing as a program, we're going out on a field trip, a work-based experience, someone comes in to talk, it goes on that calendar. And you'll see why that's important here in a minute. Or 20 minutes, I don't know. So this is an example of our group calendar. Okay, our group calendar, and you can just see, it sort of lays out every day. A student opens this up. They see, hey, what's my responsibilities? Individual calendars, these tend to get shared more with parents, the special needs instructors for some students. I don't know where you're at, but I have about IEPs. I get about 50% of my students with IEPs. All right, so they're coming in. And not that that's a big deal, but just so you know, I'm, I'm not getting all that AP-driven student. Not that I don't get a few, but I, you know, mine, I have a very diverse population academically. Um, they get evaluated, all right, so I evaluate these calendars about every weekend. I'm looking to see that pace that the student's going, keeping track of where they're at. Um, the kids are gonna use these to set their own individual goals, which we're gonna hit here in a few minutes but it forces me, these calendars, to be engaged with students. Why are we off pace? Where, where are you at? What's your goal? Okay, how does test out fit in? Okay, test out for me helped out. I've used, I've changed, I was, uh, Ken was talking earlier, I was in Oracle Academy. Anybody in Oracle Academy? You guys are all young team. Yeah, so Oracle Academy, one. So we were Oracle Academy at one point, so we were out there, Different curriculum. Well, when we changed, had a, we had an administration change and we went more, hey, we're gonna focus on the CompTIA certifications. 
So we were using a curriculum that was very driven towards that CompTIA certification. The problem I was running into is that was great for 15% of my class. That curriculum was working for those kids. It wasn't working for the rest. I feel that test outs helped me with all my students. I've been able to pace them out. And we use different certifications, as you saw, to get there. But it's helped me with hands-on activity. Students who struggle, I get this all the time, I'm not a good test taker. Well, by the time you've earned your second, third, fourth certification, all of a sudden, that's not the reason anymore. We've gotten better. And I do think test outs help me. And, and a couple of big reasons for me, it's students can capture screenshots of their pre-test and that helps me set up for remediation, okay? It helps me set their calendars up for assessment. Um, the lesson plans, I'm not a reinvent the wheel kind of guy. I think 20 years ago, I was. When I was starting out, we were creating our own modules and there wasn't curriculum. I'm fortunate enough that we have the resources where I can get curriculum that fits our needs and test out has filled that for me. This is an example of what a student's individual calendar would look like. And I realize it's small, but, um, and it just lays out. And you notice there's not just one thing because what test out's done is they put, hey, Unit 7.1, which is printers in the PC Pro, and I only know that because there's an example coming up, is a 52 minute, an estimated 52 minutes. So I'm gonna give a student like a, an hour and 10 minutes to do that. A little building, a little bit of flush time depending on the student. So it's helped me. So I can go through and say, hey, these lessons, I can group, hey, we're there for two hours and 45 minutes. Your expectation should be to work for two hours and 45 minutes. Um, this is what both would look like. So when you look at both, you can see, hey, up here, there's, there's two extras that students have to go, and they can put it, I just keep mine in month view, I'm a month view guy, because I like to see the big picture. Students can do it in day view, and they can see all the work that they have, or activities they have responsibility for in that day. This is what an assignment would look like for me when a student opens it up. And all I did was take test outs, they have a lesson plan all set up for me, oh, I was wrong, it was 58 minutes. So for the, the seven one printers, and so the students know the expectations. I can go through and tweak it. I can add comments. Hey, use this printer in the back room. Use these materials that when we do a hands-on activity. I can add and, and subtract, but I like that I don't have to retype that. All right, I copy that from uh, one student's to another's calendar. Goal setting and evaluation. This is, this is where it is. How, I, how students set goals for me, weekly reports, I call it. And this is, and I realize this is very small. I was one that he was barking at about your printing. The handout's available to you. But for me, what a weekly report is, it's a document, it's a living document for me that students use to say, this is what I do every day. And we handwrite it. And so I have procedures, and that's what you're looking at here, is the procedures for how it should be done, there's 16, and then any deductions if you don't do it that way, all right? And I figure out, you can do whatever you want with it. This is what works for me. I've been using it for years, and I've tweaked it a lot. So a student has to put the date up on the top a certain way. They have to say what time they get in class. They have to tell me, here, here's what happened today. We had a fire drill today. If you don't put that you had to fire, we had a lockdown practice today. Because my safe, we have a, we have an assistant principal, we have two, and one of them, her job is safety in our building. So she's gonna come around to me and say, when did you do your safety? When did you do your drills? And I'll have her go ask a student. So the, I make the students look it up. And so they go back and look things up. Um, if we have any visitors, anything that goes on in class, they're documenting on that. But then the big one is, so far I've set the students' goals on their calendars, or we have together through conversations, here, they have to write, physically write down, here's my goal for tomorrow. And they use their calendaring system to do that, okay? Um, this is what the form looks like, all right? And they're actually a really ugly green, so it's the only thing I print in green, and it's, it, this is pretty empty. Notice here at the bottom, I make them, pra they have to print their name. I used to just have them sign their name. I couldn't read their names, so I had to have them print their name so I force them to print their name, and then from the first week of class, so for 36 weeks, they've had to sign their name. And for some of them, first time they've ever really signed their name. So we work on signatures, we date things, and now we do a thing that's called self, 
self-review here where they have to go through and say, how did I do this week? Reflect. Give yourself, rate yourself. It's not a graded part. Just reflect. Here, I make them on a Monday, you need to put your grade in. What's your, so I'm forcing them to go out and look at their grade. I don't want grades to be the drive of my class, but we all know that it is. I mean, parents are going to be barking and counselors are barking. And so, hey, don't, don't, no big surprises here. And then they also have to do it on a Friday. And you'd be shocked how much a grade changes on Friday because I make a lot of my things do on a Friday. Weekly reports are due. You get a daily assignment. Do we get a vocab quiz? Do you get projects? I need time over the weekend to evaluate. I make a lot of my bigger things do on a Friday. So that's a weekly report. Maybe, there we go. This is a, a sample. I just took a, a scan of one of my students who did one. All right, and this is just a young man. So you can just see where he went through. Hey, I had to have the date up. You got to write the date. I'm grading you. Did you put the date up there a certain way? Did you document? What did you do on a certain day? Just writing things down. Here's my goal for tomorrow. And then I'm looking to see, hey, look. Oh, wait, did he meet his goal from yesterday to today? So I'm looking at these on a weekend, all right? This is what my conversations are on a Monday and Tuesday with students when we're doing that follow-up, all right? I use these all the time. Yep, I could do them electronically. I choose to make them right. I want to see you write things down, okay? Missing a deadline. So we got a calendar, we got assignments, they're due. Here's how you get them done. We want you to get them done on a time, and there's reasons we don't. We had um, 11 snow days second trimester. Oh, we didn't make them up. So my calendar went, to, it was awful for me. So you got to readjust. So why didn't you get things done? That could be a reason. I didn't understand it, whatever. So with, for me, if you turn work in past a deadline, it's 50% deduction. All right. If you attach a late memo to it, tell me, hey, this is what I did. This is, this is what the assignment was. Here's why it's late. Whatever the reason, turn it in, you get your points, okay? You just have to document that communication, that written communication, and it's not electronic, and you do have to turn in a paper memo to me, and we talk about how to do those. So for me, this is uh, my grading criteria, and I, who did I meet? I met somebody at breakfast, and he's gonna be a first-year teacher. You're gonna be a first-year, first time this year going in the door. And I'm like, man, I wish somebody would have handed me a grading criteria my first day. So, I mean, but here's the grading criteria that I hand out and we go over on day one of class. In there, at the very bottom of it, this is what my sample late memo looks like. First, this is the second grade that goes in the grade book, day one. First thing was the daily assignment, because that's the first thing we did after we introduced names. The second thing is we do the late memo. I log into the computer, make sure everybody can get in, learn how to do a save as, go to where the network drives are going to be. So, And I have students do this late memo. And we actually type it out in Word and a blank document to me from you, you know, and hey, they're like, geez, that's like an email. And I'm like, yeah, you're just doing an email, but it's a memo. And so everything we do is in memo format from day one to the last thing, you, everything you turn into me has to, from, date, subject. And so we get that concept from day one. It's that going back to a routine for me. All right, so that's what a sample late memo looks like. Here's a couple that a student did, and, you, and I, these are all out there for you. But it's just real short, max, I only want two sentences. Facts, don't give me fluff. Tell me why it was late and what you're gonna do about it. That's it, okay? And so that these are a couple examples from a student and a good reason is I didn't understand it. That's a legit reason. It took me longer because I didn't understand. Um, lesson plans. And this one's, I could have put this earlier, but it, time estimates from test out was huge. Um, I really like the focus questions in the vocab lists. All right, because I'm huge on vocabulary. We're not going to pass those certification tests without vocabulary. Um, Every, every developing curriculum. I got a phone call. Wendy Edwards is my contact here at Testa. I don't know about all of you, but, uh, and I was talking to her about, uh, IT fundamentals because the state of Michigan was going to force us to use that as our standardized test. And I'm like, you guys need to jump on this. And the next thing I know, hey, can you do a phone call? And the next thing, year later, all of a sudden we got IT fundamentals coming. They listen. I and mean, I thought that was huge. Um, let's see. Grade book, first year teacher, figure this one out. I don't know how everybody else's grade book works. My grade book can be a literal nightmare. And the person, the people that hate it the most are our counselors, special needs staff, um, and curriculum coordinator. 
All right, because they like everybody to be on section 7.1 printers today, and then tomorrow we're gonna do whatever the next section is, because that's easy. But that's not the world for me. Everybody's at a different spot. So what I grade is, everything gets graded. I grade you on format, I grade on direction following, writing, um, quality of work, did you, you know, so I'm grading a little bit of everything when on our work. So it takes time, it takes a lot of commitment. I mean, this is a daily thing. I have a 24 hour turnaround on my curriculum. If you do it, you get it back the next day. Now, I'm 52, had a heart attack at 50, quite a triple bypass. It was tough being out of my classroom, I'm just telling you. And so I had somebody pick up work and bring it home to me, and I'd grade it and send it back, because at 24 hours, I didn't want those students going, man. So it was, I mean, I'm just telling you, it, it's something I'm really committed to, is that 24-hour turnaround policy, because it puts the, the kids know I'm committed to it, and they're committed to it. First, first year students this year, trimester one, we had 380 assignments in the grade book. We do it every day. It's, it's not by accident. Um, so second, you can see the numbers there. There's how I grade my test out. I don't know how everybody else does it. I had to come up with a system. In the first year I used it, it was a bad system. So I had to tweak it. But what I do is I take, so like the printer 7.1, every video that's in, or every, I'm sorry, every lab that they have in a unit, I make worth 10 points. I'm a points guy. So every, those are all worth 10 points. A video is worth five, and every practice is worth two. And the reason I do it that way, you didn't test out of it. You got to watch the whole video. All right, so the students, so I go in and run a report and I see, hey, you watched 30 seconds of a five minute video, you got one point for opening it up. All right, you watch half of it, you get three. You watch the whole thing, you get your five points. I mean, that's, I didn't know a better way to do it. So if, if somebody's got a better way, I'll listen to you, but that's how I do it. So you can see like printer 7.1 is worth 53 points to me. That goes in the grade book. Yep, we get a lot of points. Well, a daily assignment for me is 10 points a day. That's an attendance grade. You're here, you put your name on it, your date on it, gave me your best effort, that's 10 points just for being here. We're not allowed to grade attendance? Okay, well I'm gonna grade an assignment then, and it's gonna happen every day. That's just me. So that makes my grade book grow though. And this is actually a screenshot, I tried to cut the names off, of what one of the five pages would look like in my grade book. And you notice there's a bunch of X's in there. Those are, students have already completed that. Hey, that trimester, they're already done with that curriculum. Or maybe they're not going to get there. So uh, you're, I, had, I had one student who earned one cert this year. I see three, just five. That's the only one I got. I mean, we're there two, almost three hours a day, five days a week. And that's what he got. He did the best he could. So he was exempt from some of the other curriculum. And, you know, and I, it, yeah, they don't like that so much, the, the curriculum office. Graded final exams, this is how we earn certification tests. Okay, I gotta watch my time. Um, if you earn, you take a pretest, 90% on that first one or above, you take the certification test. You don't earn a 90%, we're gonna remediate in the areas you missed. Where are you lacking? All right, and I've talked to some people about, this is where when we take that pretest, this is where it would help me to see. So this is where I have to have the kids take a screenshot right now of, their results, so I know where, what area we gotta remediate in, okay? So you're below, you're gonna get remediation. Once you've done the remediation work, then you can retest. If you're not at 90% and you still, and you think I could take the certification test and pass it, you can take it after you do that remediation work. So if a student retakes and they're at 86, I change their grade in the grade book, I'm always updating that. So, and I make, I make that pretest worth 100 points. So for me, that's a 100-point assignment, and they got an 80, you get a, a 67 the first time, you get 67. You retake it, now you're an 85. Hey, I make a note in there, hey, improve from here to here, I adjust that to 85. We do not grade certification tests, though, which breaks my rule about I grade everything. We don't grade certification tests themselves. Okay. Um, the CompTIA, this is an individual thing. Students are not required, if you go back to the chart I had at the beginning, it had all the tests out, it had the Microsoft certifications listed, and off to the side it had dotted lines to the CompTIAs. They're not required curriculum in my class. They're options for students. And we, I do one-on-one -on -one with students. Some students will take, we will take the practice exam um, for the CompTIA, test outs, practice, 
test out, so this year it was the 901 practice exam after they completed the PC Pro Cert. So we'll take that practice exam. How they do on it, I'll have a one-on-one -on -one with them. Hey, you gotta have an 87% on that practice exam for us to pay for your voucher. You're at a 67. Here's the remediation work you're gonna do. I, for my remediation work in, um, for the A+, I use the Mike Myers curriculum from Total Seminars. You had to find something, and that's what I use. So I use that, and I'll say, hey, you gotta do these certain units before you can retest or retake that practice test and then if you improve. Some students say, no, I don't, I don't wanna work there, I wanna go down to the Network Pro. I've had students have a lot of success on the A+, they'll do the PC Pro, they'll do the Network Pro, and then we go back and take the A+. All right, so I mean, it, every kid's different. I've got kids that come in and they're pre-test and they're ready to take the A+, the day they walk in. Well then let's go take the Net Plus, or the Network Pro, and then get ready for the Net Plus. It just depends what they bring into my class. Um, okay, state, how do we pay for certification tests? Microsoft, Bill Gates did a real nice thing. He gave money, the Gates Foundation gave all this money to the state of Michigan, and Michigan went out and purchased Microsoft curriculum and certification tests. Sort of funny how that worked. But, so I get 500 vouchers for the MTA certification tests a year. So we, we take them. We weren't, we weren't giving them before, but since they gave me 500 free vouchers, it actually fit in real well to the test out curriculum. Hey, when we get done with the operating system part, let's take that test. Hey, we get done, you know, so I've used them. Um, the, the school funds, the CERTAPORT, we buy a site license. And so I share that with one other instructor because of the foundation skills. ETA, Electronic Technicians Association International. I need to talk about this one just for a sec. The customer service specialist, this covers like all my soft skills. The state of Michigan came out and said, hey, here's all the objectives you have to cover. And there's all these soft skills on there. And I'm like, gal, it was probably, I bet you 18 years ago, I'm like, what cert could I do? There's gotta be a cert for these soft skills. And so I went looking and that one covered them. Now it's not cheap, it's, it's like, 50, 55 bucks a pop for the certification test, but that's the one that gets talked about by more employers when my students go out for interviews. It's all those soft skills. It's how do you handle customers? It's how do you document? What are your rights as an employee? What are your rights as an employer? I mean, all those things that we hit anyway, so it covered a lot of those for me. Then you can see the test out, the comp is that we do. People, if you take one, take one thing away from the conference, you can't, you can't be me in the classroom and I can't be you in the classroom. This is something I took away from somebody else. I was never one to be, I, I didn't like my students. Students never had to put their certs. We didn't talk about if you passed, all right? It was your deal, it's your certification. So this one instructor said, oh, he had his certs on a wall. I'm like, oh man, you know, I guess. So I went back to my students and said, hey, would you be interested in putting your certifications up? So last, you know, last two years we've done this. We started posting them up on the wall. Well, that's our cert wall. So when counselors come in, schools come in to visit, people, uh, chamber of commerce come in, industry comes in, this is one of the things that they bring in to show. That's our certification wall. Our cert wall, oops, I don't know what happened to that picture. Oh, I must have, oh, maybe that's the slide that I didn't add. Ooh, so that picture, the one that we're missing is the spreadsheet that lays out. We earned, last year, we earned 255 certifications. I have 37 students. Um, the most any one student earned was 14. Um, he was a two-year student, but I had two first-year students this year earn 13 certs. Um, you know, part of the, I think part of the thing I do well is get out of a student's way. You know, I'm not afraid to be to just, hey, I'm, I'm very good at making sure you're on task. I don't have to be someone who's gonna be up, and I use those kids. They're gonna be my ones to help others. Like I said, I had one student who earned one. There's a wide range in my class. And I, God, I have the spreadsheet somewhere. Sorry about that. Um, authentic assessment, and I'm, I'm getting down in my time. All right, so here's our resume. On the left-hand side, this is the resume Four days into class, a sample. You notice we put the references on there because a lot of kids don't have much stuff. A lot of them don't have any work experience or volunteer. So that's what a sample resume. We use a blank word document and this is where I teach them how to center and indents and all that because a lot of them don't come in with that skill set. This is a resume on the right of a student who was in there for two years. And actually this is the same student over a two year period. This was the one who earned 14 certs. 
So this is his certification, or this is his resume. It's his growth document. I look at these every 12 weeks. They have to give them to me. All right, so we're seeing them. When they go out and do work, authentic experiences out in industry, they take their resumes with them. I have them get them initialed. All right, so work-based learning experiences, we do one per, we do, we do, we do, they do them each trimester. Um, our, our trimester starts about the sixth day of class, we tear apart our first PC, reassemble, load an operating system. Two days later, we tear apart our first laptop, reassemble, hopefully, <laughs> with all the screws back in, and we load an operating system. About, about the second week of school then, we go to Compre New and we do a green technology unit. When we go there and we go down to kids learn about recycling technology, How, what are we gonna do with it, okay? Then that leads to our end of the year green project where we take stuff in from the community and take it black, to, we sort it out, disassemble and recycle and make a little bit of money and donate it to something. Um, manufacturing week. We go, this is first trimester, we go to Code Blue, which is a, geez, they're an emergency alert system on like college campuses and hospitals, 40 employees, they got a five person IT department, right? Small, everybody's gotta be jack of all trades. We go to Magna, large 20,000 20, employee corporation worldwide, huge IT department. So the kids, I can start, start talking a little bit, small church, big church about jobs. So we do that first try. Second trimester, we go to Spectrum Health and we go to Davenport. Spectrum Health for me, they've been great. We go in, <laughs> I know I'm getting the numbers back. I'm gonna get a hook. So we go in and Spectrum Health, they bring us in. They've got their IT departments out in the country. There's 1,200 people in this facility, 900 job descriptions. I cannot teach to 900 job descriptions. Spectrum does a great job of doing breakout sessions with the students, doing a tour. So the kids, now we've taken that first trimester experience and we're growing with it. Third trimester, they, it's a self-student driven. They're, they get an assignment for me and this is the assignment, but here's really what it's all about. It sort of summarizes everything we've done. Here's the points. They've got to do topologies, hierarchies, thank you letters, go out and they're going to do a presentation about where they visited. Here's, and here's some of the handouts. Here's the application they have to fill out. On the right hand side here is the, uh, we do a group activity, to develop questions for the experience. On the left hand side is the peer evaluation and instructor evaluation form. And these are all available if you want them. How I do that, we do three peer evaluations where all of you would evaluate the speaker and hopefully you do a nice job. And then the instructor, I do that twice a year. And then for their big end of the year one, I bring someone else in and, and I average the scores. All right, student score they get, instructor score, okay? Then we do thank you letters. We do a minimum of three typed thank you letters. Notice block style, open punctuation. I'm an old keyboarding instructor. We, they have to sign them, three paragraph format, no indents, and I give them a template and we do envelopes and we actually mail them out because it means something for those people to get a letter from a kid or a student, I should say. All right, back to the startup. How'd I do on time? <laughs> So, and so for me, here's our startup. So the, how I, this is how we start the day. A lot of times this is how we end. Oh, I forgot that. That green weekly report, and this is important for me. On that green, green weekly report we did, at the very la bottom, I sign them out every day at their desk. So the last thing, every day I hand back their papers. First thing they do, come in daily sign, and I'm handing back the days daily, whatever work they did the day before. The last thing that happens every day is you're at your desk, and I'm walking around, and I initial you out. So it's me, it's me at the start, it's me at the end, every day. And I think that's just important that those kids know that that's consistent every day. Our daily assignment, so I would have them type theirs up. They would have printed that out. Then I would have brought them in, or maybe at 8.30, we started at 8, 8.30, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hey, everybody come together, I'm gonna put them in groups of three, and they're gonna do a share out. Where did you list your, your expert, non-expert? Where did you think from the daily assignment? Just a discussion thing, so they get talking with one another. Okay, oh, questions and answers. Uh-oh, the first guy didn't get one question. <laughs> so, you have your students at various different levels doing things. What um, what do you do for a related class? Do you have a related? I don't. Class? I have. I only have the two programs, and so so like the when we do the the disassembly, all and we all come together and do that together. Three times a week, I try to do a lab activity where everybody's together, and it's gonna t and I try to make it take half hour to forty five minutes, not all their curriculum time. 
but we're going to do something together. We're going to work on subnetting. We're going to work, we're going to do we're going to do patch cables. We're we're going to do some type of hands-on activity in the lab. Not that some of the other labs don't require that they go do it independently, but I'm going to for basically I, some of my students I got to force them together. They they they're very comfortable being by themselves quiet. And I got to force them not to do that. So that's how I sort of we are but and so that would be a that would go on the group calendar. This is that activity for on a group calendar. I, and I could have showed you a group activity, and I should have, and I didn't. Sorry. More questions. Come on. Yeah. So, um, so out of those 2,000 certs um, that you had asked, which 200, you 255. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going deaf, um, which is incredible, fantastic. <laughs> Um, how many were CompTIA type sort of? I actually, I wish I, I don't know why I didn't put the. I thought I had the spreadsheet on there. The it was, Comp, Microsoft is thirty one percent. Test out was twenty five percent. Right. CompTIA, I think was like nineteen percent. And so, how, how do you fund those certs? And do you have a test center on? on we are a test center for all of them. For so we, you have a we are, on campus. We're a peer, we're a we're a we're a review test center. Yeah. And then we have to be an ETA test center to do this. The customer service specialist. Uh, Certiport, I don't remember what theirs is called, but we had to do theirs as well. And this, our school, and I'm very fortunate, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, we get, I've never been told no when I've gone and asked, especially when it comes to like certifications and things. Now, they don't let me go to a conference every year, like every two or three years, but when I want technology, I, they haven't told me no. Every student in my lab gets a PC, a laptop, and then they build a custom machine with a partner. And then we have servers that we have a nice server rack. So those uh, costs for those certifications are also included. The kids get for nothing. Nothing. The, the students aren't this. Yeah, we're very. If I if I were to have to go fund it, I would do more of that green technology project in a second. That's yeah. been huge for me. The hospital, everyone, because we we pull the hard drives out, we take them right down to the welding lab. They've shred them, and we. I mean, it's it's been a great project. Community's been very involved. The problem is, I've had to limit it to like two weeks because my room just gets trashed yeah. with stuff, you know? But the kids love it. I mean, the kids, we tore apart like 1,200 phones at the end of the school year, and we did it for a summer camp too. Fantastic. Yeah. We only have time for one more question. Uh-oh. It's just kind of related to what you're talking about. For those who don't know, um, Test Out does have a discount code for CompTIA, it's a 10% discount. I think it's test out 2020, if I remember correctly. So we do talk to your account manager. We do have some discounts on now, the yeah, CompTIA. Exam. Yeah, and we get the, like for CompTIA, we use the academic pricing, and then we buy the site license for the IT fundamentals. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, and I get kids who won't take it. It's just, yeah. Uh, considering all that you do, do you ever have any time to do anything personal? I, mean, I am, oh I've been a varsity goodness. football coach for 25 years. Uh, the last two years I've been a junior high coach, I get to scout. I actually gave up coaching varsity. I don't know if anybody got to meet my daughters. They're here with me. Um, they're swimmers and water polo players. And it just got to, I had a life, uh, two years ago, I'm just telling you, a life changed for me. And I was like, <sighs> it just wasn't worth it. Where do we get the handouts? What's that? The handouts. Where do we get them? Um, I put them out. There's a shared drive. They're gonna. I think they're gonna share with everybody. Um, I'm not sure. With everyone. And if not, you can email me, and I, I, I just give you rights to my at Google Drive. Even though I hate Google, but that's a whole other lecture I could do. But if you email me, I give you. If I was a first year teacher, I will dump everything your way. I mean, I give you all my parent communication stuff and. Like I said, I got reference letters for students that, I mean, why, I mean, people take it, use it. Anybody else? Two claps, that's all you get, it's two claps. And so we were gonna practice that. <laughs> hey, I still had a minute and nine seconds. <laughs>